In Tarkov, we measure success in multiple different ways. For me personally, it's getting out with more stuff that you come in with to make a profit either through the flea market or through traders. When you're making money, you are successful in Tarkov. It doesn't matter so much how many people you kill, your survival rate or your KD, as long as you're pulling out items that are equal or higher value than your actual loadout itself, you're personally, in my eyes, a very good Tarkov player and you are successful. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about just that. How do I make money in Tarkov? How can you do the same things as I do and then earn money and become successful? Before we get started, I want to spark up a discussion. What do you think success is in Tarkov? How do you measure it? And do you think you are successful and why? Let me know down below in the comments. I will be replying to as many people as possible as I always do. And let's start a conversation together. Firstly, and I know I talk about this a lot, but you need to start using budget loadouts, especially at this stage in the wipe. Not many people are rocking the full tier armor that you see at the end of the wipe or in the pre-wipe events of Tarkov. So running full gear is almost pointless. It's very hard to make your money back for your gear set or come out with a profit if you're spending 600, 700,000 rubles on a loadout. I've got plenty of videos on the channel based on budget loadouts and why I think they work, but I'm going to list a couple of them that I really stick by, especially in 0.12, and then show a clip of using in action, and then you can see just how effective these can be against one target or even multiple targets at a time. Firstly, the big elephant in the room, the weapon that you guys are probably screaming at right now, the Mosin. The Mosin is an extremely powerful weapon that you can buy from proper loyalty level 1 for 33,436 rubles. It uses 762.54R ammunition, meaning it's so powerful even against heavy geared armoured targets. The ammo types are relatively cheap as well. For proper loyalty level 1 you can buy LPS rounds, and if you want to buy a stack of 40 you can buy that for 7,156 rubles. And that's your weapon sorted, you can scope it if you like, if you have proper loyalty level 2 you can buy all the parts for the scope, but the Mosin personally, I don't think it needs it. Then you can move on buying your meds, buy two bandages, an AI2 and a painkiller and this will only come to 10,133 rubles. And in terms of armour, you don't need anything. Armour in my opinion, not worth it. Not right now when you're trying to stay on a budget. All you need to do is go to Ragman and buy a balaclava. This is only 2,719 rubles and it will cover your face if you're hiding in a bush making you less visible to other enemies. So that will bring your grand total to 53,444 rubles. Not a lot of money considering you'll easily be able to make that back killing one or two enemies. And why don't I bring a backpack you might ask? It's so common to find scavs or other players with backpacks, so personally I don't think you need it because you can pick one up in raid pretty easily. But if you do want to spend a couple extra thousand rubles, buy a sling off of Ragman level 1 as well. So that's one loadout for under 55,000 rubles, and this will beat people that have spent 500, 600,000 on a loadout just if you play your cards right. Make sure you take it slow, don't run up to their face because the Mosin is a very long weapon which means you're going to be pulling your weapon up if you get right up close and personal. The Mosin is made for mid to long range combat so I think you need to take advantage of that. And even if you haven't scoped your weapon, the iron sights are really good. You can take advantage of these iron sights and kill someone quite easily from 100 meters away. I'm now going to show you two clips of me using the Mosin to show how it acts in raid and how effective it is against both PMCs and scavs. So take a look at how I run. Make sure you run similar to this. It'll give you the best chances of survival. I'm taking it slow and I'm very cautious. Don't run and gun because you haven't got the armor to survive a head on assault against a five man team. They're going to take you out before you can take out all five of them. Oh, back. Yeah, he's running across. Where is he? He's running across to the other side. Oh, okay. He probably saw Mr. Goo guy running up and bolted. <laughs> he just wanted a kiss. <laughs> Took out my fucking leg is what he did. Who just shot? That was, that was him. I'm pushing up to him. Coming. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be lagging way back to my legs. Crocky. Is he? Oh, there's a few. Oh. Yeah, I'm on this side, so be careful I'm by the. Yeah, we're right behind you. Yeah, cool. I can't even. Oh, there's two now. Shot. <laughs> So this is your Mosin, boy. Oh, target. 
In the bushes. He oh, hit me, but he's hit hard. Yep. All right. Good kill. Is that free? Is that just free? That was three. <sighs> Best case here. Oh, boys. Scaff goes down. Oh my god. Pushing down. I got you. You want scaff boss, sir? Scaff bosses, guys. If a Mosin isn't for you and you want something with a faster fire rate, I definitely recommend a PP19 from Prop or Loyalty Level 1 again. The weapon itself is only 17,961 rubles, and you can buy two extra 30 round mags for just 5,038 rubles. Now, for the weapon, you could just leave it at that, but personally, I put the Cobra Reflex Sight from Prop or Loyalty Level 1 for just 9,727 rubles on there as well, bringing the grand total for the weapon and mags to 32,726 rubles. Then you're going to want to buy your painkillers, two bandages and an AI2 for 10,133 rubles again from Therapist. Then you go to Mechanic Loyalty Level 1 and buy your ammunition. We're going to be buying 9x19 PST. 150 rounds of it will cost you 9,672 rubles. Now we're going to head over to Ragman, buy an M rig. This is the mini rig for 10,080 rubles. Buy a sling as a backpack for 1,936 if you want. Again, it's a backpack so you can pick up one in raid pretty easily. And then of course get yourself a balaclava again for 2,719 rubles. And then that will bring your grand total for this whole loadout to 67,266 rubles, which again is not a lot, but quite a bit more expensive than the Mosin one. The reason this could be preferable to players though is because of its fire rate, the Mosin is bolt action and only holds 5 rounds in its internally fed mag, so this you can have 30 round mags that can go full auto. You will be wasting quite a lot of ammo with this, but it will be more likely that you can go face to face with a couple of enemies, whereas with a Mosin you'll need to stand back or place your shots really well. Now I'm going to show you another quick clip of me using the PP-19 in Raid. Notice how I'm able to get shots on target and kill enemies even if they have the jump on me. I don't need to wait for them to get in positions for myself. With its fast fire rate and its accuracy low recoil, I'm able to turn around and kill an enemy before they even have a chance to kill me. Obviously you don't need to play quite so aggressive, you can stay back if you want, just like with a Mosin, but with the fact that this is such a low recoil full auto weapon, you can be quite aggressive with this and still come out on top. Oh my goodness, you scared me shitless. Oh. Hello, yeah. Bruggle. Now one more loadout that I love wholeheartedly is the SKS. You can buy a Cherrywood SKS for 22,630 rubles from Prop or Loyalty Level 1 again. With 50 PS rounds, it's 76239 PS for just 3,016 rubles. 
This is an incredibly powerful round again, and it's not bolt action, it's a 10 round internally fed mag with the SKS, so you can shoot 10 rounds before you have to reload at all. Then of course you've got the balaclava and the meds, which brings your total to 38,498 rubles. It's a very cheap loadout again that is likely to bring you out a profit. Now I do love the SKS, it is more of a battle rifle than a sniper rifle so you can get up close and personal and stay back as well and the rounds are powerful enough to take out scav boss minions with a couple of shots. For example, I killed Glucar, the reserve scav boss, with just an SKS. There is a video on how to kill him on my channel in the card annotation and in the description if you do want to check that out. But I'm going to show you a clip on me using this SKS now. It is absolutely incredible for both scavs, scav boss, and PMCs. What are you doing hiding back here? Now we go. I'm going my stomach. Come on. Probably not the best spot to do it considering people will probably be coming over the bridge any second now, but hey ho. Stay for yourself up, my boy. You sneaky breaky. So yes, in total, spending money does make you money. You won't be making as much money if you're going as a hatchling all the time. Yes, you have nothing to lose, but you have nothing to defend yourself with either. Now, all three of these loadouts are under 100,000 rubles, and if you don't have that money, then I go on to my next tip, and that is use your scav. Now you can get your scav for free with a free gear set and everything every 20 minutes and this will give you a chance to go in raid, either explore a map that you don't quite know yet. Personally I use my scav all the time on reserve. Not only can you pull out a load of gear from the scav boss, his minions or just looting the map because there is amazing stuff pretty much everywhere but you can also learn different ways around the map and underground passages etc etc. Now as I've said your scav is timed to 20 minutes so if you die and you lose all your stuff with the scav you don't get a chance to put that in your stash and you have to wait 20 minutes to go again. So to get around the wait time I recommend doing PMC scav raid, PMC scav raid and have it like that. The reason I say this is yes you're not going to be progressing too far through the quest line because you're sort of hindering yourself by not going PMC, PMC, PMC one after the other but you are not losing as much money. If you are injured in raid and you extract, you have now got off raid healing. Your HP, hydration, etc. will remain the same as what you left raid with. So say if I got shot and had 300 HP when I exited the raid, then I would have 300 HP in the stash and in the hideout, meaning I'd have to heal myself with AI2s, IFACs, etc. from therapist in my stash before I can go in again with full health. 
but your character's hydration and health does regenerate slowly from the hideout and you will eventually become back to full health, you've just got to wait. If you do wait then you've saved yourself 20k or so on healing yourself and making sure your hydration's full before you go in again. Now, with a scav, it's taking your mind off of waiting. You can go into a scav raid, get a free gear set and the likelihood of coming out with tons more stuff to put in your stash while your character's healing back up to full. Then you can go and get your 30 to 60k gear set, go in again, if you die, so what, you've got your scav there waiting for you. Now I don't just go reserve for my scavs because there's tons of loot, the extracts are actually a lot easier. As a PMC in reserve you have to activate certain stuff like activate the power, get a friendly scav to come with you, wait for the armoured train or have certain climbing equipment to use the cliff descent extract. But with scavs there are plenty of places that you could just walk up to and you'll start to extract without having to wait or turn on anything and you can see if you don't know the extracts very well on reserve in the card annotation description and on my channel there is a extract guide for you so you can check that out if you like but yeah go any map you like and you've got a free gear set and a chance to pull out more so i'm going to show you a quick clip of what i was able to do as a scav that man's so broken That's a nice AK. Uh -huh. Oh Lord. I think I ascended. Now you're not just going to want to spend money on your loadouts, you're also going to want to do your hideout too. One place I recommend upgrading first is your med station. Upgrade that as quick as possible because it reduces the time it takes for your character to regain to full health if he is low. So you can wait less and less time and you'll be able to get your gear sets and go into raids a lot quicker. So to summarize, using cheap loadouts is more likely to give you a profit because you haven't got to bring out so much gear to make up the amount that you spent on the loadout. If you add a M44 armor, etc, etc, one, it's expensive, and also if you've insured all the items and you have, say, a 4 armor M4, people are more likely going to take that over a Mosin PP19 or a Cherrywood SKS and no armor. Next. Use your scav as and when you can because it's free money and you get that free gear set that you can extract with straight away or run around the map, explore it and have the chance to pull out more things. If you die you haven't got to worry about oh I've just lost this, this and this because after just another PMC raid you've got another scav sitting there which could have better stuff. And finally, upgrade your hideouts med station as early as possible. It will reduce the time you're waiting for your player to regain health. Don't worry about spending 20k on healing yourself, just wait. It's a waste of money in my opinion, especially if you're struggling to gain that money and gain that momentum. Once you've got money in the bank, then sure, if you need to do a PMC raid after PMC raid, then go and spend that money on AI2s to heal yourself back up to full. If you do have any questions, once again, let me know down below in the comments, I will answer them. And if you enjoy the content I produce, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest Escape from Tarkov content. I love you all, thank you for all your support guys, I'll see you in the next video. 
I'd like to thank you all for staying to the end of this video, but before I end it, I'd like to tell you something about Shadow. Shadow is a company that I'm working with to promote Max Gaming PC settings anywhere you are. Shadow is a cloud-based subscription service which allows you to subscribe $30 a month and you can play any games, Max settings, anywhere you are, which means you can have a broken up PC, a shitty laptop, or a Mac, and you can still play games like Tarkov in Max settings, 1440p, 60fps, and this is actually how I record all my gameplay and stream Tarkov at this point in time. So if you liked how the game looked in this video, then check out the description and it'll take you to Shadow's website. You can do more research there. And if you do decide to sign up using the code SAM10, you'll get $10 off your first month. Thank you so much everyone. Toodle pip, cheerio. Enjoy your evening.